So unless you've been living under a rock for the past 20 years, you're probably well acquainted with Jenny from the block. Whether it's from being a pop icon, starring in rom-coms like Made in Manhattan, headlining the Super Bowl, or being the other half of Benefer 2.0, JLo is killing it at life. And given that she looks like she's been stuck in a time capsule, everyone and their grandma wants to know about her wellness routine. So let's talk about it. The good, the bad, and the downright misinformed. Hey everyone, I'm Abby Sharp. Welcome to Abby's Kitchen. In today's video, we'll be taking a look at triple threat superstar and newlywed Jennifer Lopez. But first we're gonna play a little game called Abby's Daily Hunger Crush and Combo. This time from the comfort of my car. So I'm about to go pick up my son from school and there's usually like crazy traffic. So I always have to keep some little snackies in the car in case I get hangry on the way. So today we got some roasted almonds for some healthy fats. We got an apple for some fiber and I've got one of my Bilt Bar Puffs for my protein. You guys know I love these bars because they taste like chocolate because they're made with real chocolate. Plus they have 15 grams or more of protein per bar. This one's got 17 grams and it tastes like a marshmallow coated in chocolatey goodness. Mm. So good. These keep me in a good mood, even when I'm battling traffic and I've got really cranky kids in the back. So if you wanna try a Bilt Bar for yourself, you can check out my promo code abbysharp 15 to get 15% off of your order. And you can pause the screen or look at the description to check out my disclaimer, including a trigger warning to those with current or previous experiences with disordered eating. So as always, feel free to skip this video if it is not supportive to your journey. And if you are not already subscribed, Hit that subscribe button and follow me over on TikTok and Instagram at Abby's Kitchen. We're gonna start with a bit of an older interview from her, but it does seem like it's the most consistent representation that I've seen pretty much everybody else quote. So obviously we do not know if this is how JLo eats today or every day, but regardless, as usual, I'm just using this as teachable material. I usually start off with a shake in the morning. Okay, so this makes total sense for a busy working woman on the move. Smoothies can be a great and efficient source of nutrition and hers sounds light on the calories, but at least has some balance with some fiber from the berries, some protein and fats from the Greek yogurt and some extra protein in the protein powder. But if you ever down a smoothie and then feel like you're like still ready to eat, it's not just your mind playing tricks on you. Research suggests that smoothies are often less satiating compared to if you were to eat each individual ingredient, even if the total calories are exactly the same. And this is because liquids kind of bypass a lot of the important digestive steps and they move through your system a lot faster than whole food. So even though smoothies can be a convenient way to get in lots of nutrition super fast, they might not hold you over as long as the food that you chew. It's also worth noting that a lot of influencers will insist that you chew your smoothie to stimulate the digestive enzymes in your saliva. And while this theoretically makes sense for better digestion, it may not necessarily help with the satisfaction factor. So to bump up the satiety, I suggest pairing it with some toasted nut butter, a couple eggs, or a handful of some nuts on the side. I also wanna add that JLo's been on the record for saying that she completely avoids caffeine because it wrecks your skin and will instead drink lots of water throughout the day to stay hydrated. We love a hydrated queen and research does suggest that water plays a small role in maintaining skin hydration. However, I wouldn't say that coffee is the antithesis to water when it comes to skin health. Caffeine is at best a mild diuretic with no significant differences in urine output from folks who drink water versus coffee. Coffee is water. It's actually almost 99% water. So it's not going to dry out your skin 
as long as you're staying hydrated. It also has some benefits for skin since it's a good source of antioxidants which combat free radical damage that can negatively impact the skin. In fact, we have research showing that coffee drinkers have a lower risk of certain skin cancers. However, there is a bit of a nuance here as you could potentially argue that caffeine could negatively impact your skin if it makes you feel really anxious because you're consuming an excessive amount as we know that increased cortisol levels can trigger acne breakouts. Also, what you put in your coffee may also play a role here, especially if you find things like dairy and sugar to be potential culprits behind your breakouts. But overall, any negative impact that coffee specifically may have on the skin really depends on your unique sensitivity to caffeine and what else you put inside. But for most folks, moderate coffee consumption is not gonna wreck your skin. Then after that, you know, probably like right before lunch i start getting really hungry i'll have like a little bit of fruit or you know um, a bar or something like that so i'm not surprised that she starts to feel hungry shortly after breakfast given that her smoothie only had like 250 calories max and was completely liquid So we definitely would want to see that bumped up. And again, I think that fruit or bars can be a great portable quickie snack, but if we enjoy them together rather than like an either or, we'd have a much better hunger crushing combo and a more well-balanced dose of macronutrients. Okay. And then um, I'll have a lunch and it'd usually be something yummy. And again, I, I don't like giving up yummy food. Like that's a big deal for me, but yeah, it'll be no. something, like, you know, chicken and salad or vegetables or quinoa or something like that. And okay. again, I learned that doing the plant-based program that I did. I am all for not giving up the foods that you love. And I find that this is all too often the first thing to go in a lot of rigid celeb diets. And I also think that chicken, salad, vegetables, and quinoa are yummy. Well, not quinoa, quinoa sucks, but I was totally expecting the statement about not giving up yummy foods to be followed by something, I don't know, a little less diety? I mean, if chicken and salad truly is what lights up JLo's life, then amazing. I am so glad that she won't give it up. But it makes me wonder what not so yummy meals she's making herself eat. Anyway, as for the yummy lunch itself, we've got a good balance of fiber in the veggies, quinoa for carbs and fiber, and chicken for some protein. Ideally, I'd love to see some healthy fats in there, whether it's from an oil-based dressing, nuts, avocado, or even swapping the chicken for salmon on some days. So even though it's very like celeb-esque to have salad for lunch, it doesn't sound like JLo is one to just eat a pile of lettuce for lunch and then call it a day. And considering how physically active if she is as a performer, she definitely needs to have enough fuel in the tank to bring her A game. And then um, at night, sometimes I just eat whatever I want, to be honest. It's like it's dinner time, I'm gonna have a good meal with my kids. I think a lot of it has to do with portion control. I don't deprive myself of things. I. You don't need to if you're practicing I, portion yeah, control. Yeah, I, I just try to moderate it mm -hmm. a little bit. So if I want to have, you know, a little bit of rice and beans, and because that's what I grew up with, and yeah. some and some steak or whatever, I could do that. Like most people with families, dinner is usually kind of unpredictable and varied because it's often shared with others. So again, I like that JLo doesn't limit herself to a handful of diet-friendly foods, but rather eats what sounds good to her that day while also prioritizing eating a meal as a family. And this is a great example of how food is so much more than just fuel. It brings us together in community with our loved ones and is a vehicle to nourish our spirit just as much as our physical body. Cultural foods likewise play an important role in connecting with our cultural identity. So I think that it's great that JLo honors her Puerto Rican roots by eating cultural foods like rice and beans and getting to share that experience with her kids. As for the comment on portion control, I get that this was her way of saying that she tries to eat in moderation and this is what allows her to be flexible. But I also wanna highlight that portion control can still be limiting if it doesn't align with your body's innate satiety signals. So sure, you can serve yourself a small portion of food so that you don't feel deprived of it, but what happens if you finish your small portion and your hunger signals are still on full blast. 
This is not something that you can necessarily portion control your way out of. Your body still needs to eat. It still needs more food, even if it's deemed unhealthy food. So it's okay to give yourself permission to rely on an internal measure of fullness rather than an external source of how much food you allegedly should be eating. When we idealize one thing, it's unhealthy for everybody else. And so I think the idea of being curvaceous, being a little bit bigger than normal or smaller than normal, all of it's okay. Yeah. So long as it's healthy. Right. So long as it's healthy. And there, there shouldn't be one ideal of what beautiful is. I can imagine JLo has gone through her own journey of body acceptance after being ridiculed in the media for having a booty when it was in vogue to have a thigh gap. And while in the last decade, we've seen her particular body type celebrated, thanks to people like the Kardashians and their sought after BBLs, it now seems like we're kind of going back to the waif thin era, as I discussed in my video right here. My guess, or at least my hope, is that we won't be seeing JLo dieting down to a size zero just to fit the current trend unlike some other major celebs in the game. So I appreciate JLo at least calling out that health isn't a one size fits all. However, I do also wanna to touch on the line about it's okay so long as it's healthy. I know what she's saying, and at face value, this seems like the kind of PC body positive thing to say. Your body size doesn't matter, your health does. And this is a huge conversation, but I'll just say that this is a common belief that is rooted in ableism and access. But the respect and kindness that we show to another human should never be contingent on their perceived health. We don't owe anyone a confirmation of our health status. And unless you are a person's doctor interpreting their labs, we'll never know if their body is healthy, if that's even how we want to define health. What about mental and emotional health? Like, how do we gauge that? Bottom line, I appreciate JLo's statement because I think it came from a good place, but I also just wanna invite everyone who has said the same thing from a place of love and care to think about disproportionate access to health and what bearing that may have on a person's worth. Just some food for thought. But back to JLo, while it would seem from this older interview that she advocates for body acceptance and enjoying food, her controversial no sugar, no carbs, 10 day detox challenge tells a slightly different tale. I'm a sugar and carb, like that's most of my diet. Yeah. And he's like, well, let's just cut it out. I was like, completely? Like cold turkey? For someone who claims that it's a big deal to not cut out yummy food, I'm surprised that she agreed to cut out something that she loves and that apparently makes up most of her diet. I am fiercely against these stupid challenges. Unless you can see yourself sticking to these types of dietary changes for the long run, there's really no point in participating in them for some kind of quick fix. Because whatever progress you might achieve during those 10 days will immediately get undone on day 11 when you face plant into a plate of cinnamon buns. Like, and you're thinking, I'm thinking about it all the time. I'm like, when I can have sugar again, I'm gonna have cookies and then I'm gonna have bread and then I'm gonna have bread with butter and then I'm, gonna, and I'm just like thinking. Yep. That sounds about right. The issue with these types of challenges is that any extended period of restriction is almost always followed immediately by some kind of binge or overeating episode. And once you are in the clear and finally have permission to eat like you normally would, you are actually more likely to overcompensate on calories and effectively undo any caloric deficit you may have had during those 10 days. This is precisely why we do not take nutrition advice from unqualified nutrition coaches or personal trainers. Like who the f wants to spend 10 precious days in an alternate universe where all you can think about is bread and cookies. This woman is way too busy for her headspace to be consumed by this. First and second day, what you realize is that you're addicted to sugar. Yeah. Like yeah. it's like crack. It's like crack. You crave it. It's like a drug. And, and to be honest, it, it is the reason we have so much inflammation and so many toxins in our body. And so my trainer challenged us because he knows I love to eat cookies. Yeah. yeah. And he's like, all right. He's like, you got to, like, scale back on this. He's like, just reset your body where we start getting you on healthier carbs. Folks, you can start incorporating more 
healthy, high fiber carbs any day, any time. You do not need a 10 day detox or reset to start doing that. Also, your body is not a Wi-Fi modem that you can like disconnect for 10 seconds and then reset. Your body is a well-oiled machine that still needs adequate calories to function optimally. So starving the body of calories and its preferred energy source, AKA carbs, especially for someone as active as JLo, will do nothing besides slow you down and make you miserable, which I'd argue is actually the opposite of a reset. We also can't be painting all carbs with the same inflammatory brush. High fiber carbs like fruits, veggies, legumes, and whole grains are loaded with antioxidants, which are actually anti-inflammatory for the body. I would even argue that the hunger, misery, and stress that you would endure on a detox like this would play an even greater role in inflammation in the body Body by increasing the stress hormone cortisol, which we know is associated with increased markers of inflammation. So please, just don't. You will lose, you know, a bunch of pounds on it. You will lose inches because it's just the nature of once you get rid of that sugar and those carbs, it just starts coming off. Reminder that any weight loss during this 10 day challenge is likely predominantly water weight with possibly small amounts of fat and muscle, the latter of which we do not want to lose. But it takes about two to four days to clear your glycogen stores and the water bound to them after going on a very, very low carb diet, which usually leads to a modest drop in weight of around one to 10 pounds. But again, given that this is a temporary diet, any water weight lost will come right back at the end of the 10 days when you go back to eating carbs. And any body fat that may have been lost from restriction will also likely come right back after you've binged on said carbs. So yeah, there really isn't a great ROI for this challenge. So let's sum this bad boy up. As someone who advocates for self-care, not depriving yourself of the foods that you love and embracing your body shape just the way it is as long as it's healthy, I am a little disappointed Jayla would participate in such an unhealthy cleanse. At the same time, I can really empathize with celebrities like JLo, along with literally everyone else on social media right now. I mean, no one is immune to the pressures of diet culture, especially in Hollywood when the advice that you're getting is from people that you trust like your trainer. But even if changing her body was absolutely necessary for a particular role, I would have much rather she do it in a safe and sustainable way, rather than a quick temporary fix that may actually have resulted in more negative implications for her body and mind, such as boomerang weight gain and unnecessary stress. And if she still needed to do this 10 day detox, at least do not publicize it for everybody else to copy. This will do absolutely nothing good for the young impressionable girls and women who idolize her. So is the 10 day detox to thank for JLo's physique and youthful glow? How about new? If anything, a lot of it is likely to do with the cumulative effects of more gentle and sustainable aspects of her lifestyle, like hydration, sunscreen use, quality sleep, extensive physical activity, a nutrient rich diet, and of course, in large part due to genetics as well. So this is a reminder that next time you hear that your favorite celeb is trialing a detox or a fad diet that makes them feel like they're in an alternate universe, take it as a sign to just like keep on scrolling. Stay here in this universe where we focus on long-term habits that work. And speaking of habits, you can check out my video on my top weight loss tips right here. And on that note, that's all that I have for you guys today. If you like this video, be sure to give it the thumbs up. Leave me a comment below on what or who you'd like to see me review next. Subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time on Abby's Kitchen. Bye.